Howdy y'all, back today with an appreciation video of the Marvel and DC facsimile editions that are uh, happening now, been happening all year. Um, it is no surprise to any of my longtime viewers as I've made uh, a couple of videos in the past about my love of the reprints of, uh, I hate the word key because it's completely o overused now, uh, but I will say significant books. I love the reprints of significant books, particularly when they maintain uh, the, the, the greater element of the cover art. It's wonderful. These facsimile reprints are actually what I have been waiting for for about 40 years. They're, they're finally just doing what... Uh, the, the uh, reprints of the past haven't completely nailed, but these are really on it. I just got this handful uh, the other day, including this one, the one, two, three, four, four or five books the other day, uh, yesterday actually, and uh, just lovely, absolutely lovely. That's the Batman 232, of course. Um, and I've also been saying for years, hell, if I could just have a facsimile of all my books, I would just sell all of my original books and just move on, with very few exceptions. Here's this. Uh, this I got, uh, what was it, last year? earlier this year when it came out, uh, the first facsimile uh, in this uh, latest wave, uh, the FF number one. Beautiful book. Now I only pulled out, uh, I didn't go through the entire collection to pull out uh, all, all the stuff, all the reprints of all the books that I have, but uh, you'll get the point here. Got these yesterday too, the X-Men 1 and the giant size X-Men 1. And I gotta say, I'm a little dismayed. Cover looks a little wonky, right? Like, not quite right. What it is, Marvel decided they had to put this logo up there. If they had uh, just not bothered with that the book the book looks symmetrical now right all right not to mention it says marvel comics group right here anyway that's just a small little gripe of mine and what it is folks i i know i know i know there is no substitution for you know, the original first pressing of the books. But for someone like me who's been at this for about 50 years now, um, I don't often pull out my books, you know, from their, their Mylar homes and read them. I have a big, big reading stack upstairs. They're unbagged. I just grab a handful and read them. Um, so for someone like me, it's all about just putting, putting the thing in my hand and, you know, it's put it in my hand, I look at it, and it's kind of a uh, pop culture artifact. You know, I look at the beauty of the artifact itself. Um, that's about all I can say about that. Uh, either you get it or you don't, but that's what it is. When I put a comic book in my comic book in my hand, it's about looking at 
at it as an artifact. Um, so I just showed a couple of the uh, recent facsimile editions. Um, I know here in a couple of weeks we're going to have the Batman 251 and the Amazing Fantasy 15. They're, they're going to hit the racks. And something about the Amazing Fantasy 15. I was just looking online yesterday. And I know they did a True Believers. The True Believers thing that's been going on for a couple of years. They did a, a True Believers pressing of Amazing Fantasy 15. And it seems like all the books, they, they've done a couple of dozen books now, uh, the True Believers, you know, for what, the dollar or cover price or whatever. You can get everything, everything in that True Believer thing, you can still get that stuff for a dollar. With the exception of the Amazing Fantasy 15. Go on eBay and it's 20 30 40 50 dollars. Which leads me to my point of, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here, but it leads me to the point that, in my opinion, of all the reprint books, facsimiles, reprints, whatever you want to call them, over all the decades, up to and including now, there are five books that you can count on When they are reprinted, they will maintain heat. They will maintain interest. And there will be a little bit of a premium on them. And they are. Amazing Fantasy 15. Detective Comics 27. Action Comics number one. Superman number one. Batman number one. Mark it down. I am not wrong. Even this book doesn't generate the heat, the interest, the premium that those books will. Although this is a great, a great uh, book, a great title. The <laughs> Marvel Milestone Editions. Uh, these things are wonderful. I've got a, I've got a bunch of them upstairs. Again, I didn't just completely plow through the collection. I just pulled out some examples of uh, some of the uh, reprints that uh, I, I feel are, are worth uh, gathering. Silver Age Classics. DC Silver Age Classics, right? These came out in the early 90s. And I have to say that one of the uh, real qualifiers for me when it comes to the reprints is that they maintain at least a modicum of the original cover art, right? You know, because when I was a kid, we had uh, in, the, in the early 70s, uh, and I was an elementary school kid, and we had the reprints of the Fantastic Four and the Amazing Spider-Man in Marvel's Greatest Comics and Marvel Tales. And they had new covers. And the new covers weren't too bad. You had a lot of Gil Kane magnificence happening in there. Um... And I would occasionally pick up an issue or two or whatever, you know, just to check out the, the long ago past of the 1960s, right? Um, but to me, it again, it is about having a uh, modicum of the the actual the the true cover art present. Right. These these are the ones that are, in my opinion, the most desirable, the most collectible. Here are a few of the Millennium Edition uh, from DC. They came out in what 1999, I guess, which is why they called them the Millennium. 
And again, these aren't all I have. Th these are just examples. Um, very desirable books. Look at that. Detective 38. Come on. Lovely little things. Here's uh, Detective 27. <laughs> yeah, right. And Detective Comics number one. Right. Really lovely. Lovely. Uh, reprints and here just for shits and giggles we'll put up the uh, Millennium Edition uh, Green Lantern Green, Green Arrow 76 alongside the uh, Silver Age Classics the Silver Age DC Silver Age Classics came out in the early to mid 90s and again the Millennium Edition came out in I believe 1999 so Again, but they've got uh, the original covers kind of intact. Marvel Tales. Kind of a mixed bag. Uh, in the uh, early 70s, you, you had, again, you kind of had new covers uh, wrapped around reprints of the older issues. But in the early to mid 80s, I think that what is this? 80, 83, 84. My eyesight's terrible and I, and I need new glasses. But they had these reprints in Marvel Tales. And at least they made the Spider Man logo uh, the, the larger thing as opposed to Marvel Tales being the larger logo, right? Classic. Spider-Man 31, Spider-Man 33, right? Beautiful. And you can find these books in, in the dollar bins, folks. You know, uh, uh, here we go. You want to talk about a book that I want to see uh, as a... Uh, Marvel facsimile edition. Here is Marvel Tales number 150, which reprints The Amazing Spider-Man Annual number one. Look at that. I, I like the orange color, replacing the original white background. Would love to see this as a facsimile edition. Right on top of it, man. This is a stupendous comic book make no mistake from the from the front cover and the splash page to the very last period uh, uh you know of the issue this is a stupendous book amazing spider-man annual number one and it's really only one of a handful of books that i i am uh, that i would consider buying like uh I would like to have an original Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number One. What the heck else is? I'm st see, I'm starting to forget now. There's only a couple of them. So, oh, Silver Surfer Number One. I had several copies over the years, but I'd I'd like to have Silver Surfer Number One back. But here's another one. Marvel. Ta here's another one. Marvel Tales 137. Beautiful reprint of Amazing Fantasy 15. And again, this is one of the tried and true books. The reprints, again, it's Amazing Fantasy 15, Detective Comics 27, Action Comics number one, Superman number one, and Batman number one. You can always count on the, the reprints uh, maintaining heat. That's just the way it is. Here are just a couple of more, uh, this is around, what, 79 or 80, something like that, 1980. Uh, Marvel Super Action 18 uh, reprints Avengers 57. Again, it keeps most of the original art intact and all that. This is another really great candidate for the Marvel facsimile uh, ongoing 
series right now. And certainly this book. This is Fantasy Masterpieces number one. Again, what's the date? 79. Uh, reprinting Silver Surfer number one. This thing is screaming for a facsimile edition. Silver Surfer number one. But even if they don't, this book is a wonderful, wonderful addi addition to anyone's collection. Look at that. And it's just beautiful. Number three and four are nothing to sneeze at either. Yeah, Silver Surfer 3 and 4 are candidates for the uh, Marvel facsimile too. This is Amazing Adventures number 1, excuse me, from 1979. Um, yeah, geez, they were doing some really good reprints back in the late 70s into the early 80s, right? Nice red background. Big X-Men logo. Look at that. Yeah, wonderful thing. Right? Great, great book. And finally, uh, EC reprints. Uh, this is, is one of the books, I forget the publisher, but in the early 70s, I don't know, around 1970. 273-74 they reprinted uh, a bunch of these EC books with a, a dollar cover price and uh, this is the uh, Two Fist of Tales 34 beautiful Jack Davis cover and it's uh, exact reprint and these things are, are real, real cheap to find too these uh, 1973-ish books. They're plentiful and they're out there. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> now we get into uh, the 90s with Gladstone. Gladstone did several uh, several series uh, publishing uh, EC uh, reprints and they are uh, always worth picking up the quality of the books themselves is just fantastic and you know they keep the original cover art and all that anyway okay well i hope y'all got something out of that here let me see where's the uh where's the x-men there we go i just want to take a look at these Ooh, look at that, side by side. The new facsimile edition in the 1979 Amazing Ventures number one. Yeah, look at that. I mean, the, the books are just great. I, I've, I've seen a couple of videos of people bitching about, oh, the facsimile editions are going to drive the prices down on my X-Men 1 and my Hulk 181. Uh, no, they're not. Give me a fucking break. Pull yourselves together, bitches. It ain't gonna happen. Um, an, an original pressing of Hulk 181 is always going to be Hulk 181. And they can print uh, 2 million facsimiles and it's not going to affect the price at all. Don't worry about it, man. Just enjoy it. Just enjoy being able to wander into your comic shop in this day and age and go, you know what? I think I'll take one of those. Enjoy it, man. Focus on the positives, man. Five bucks for a giant size X-Men number one. Beautiful facsimile. Come on, man. If you don't appreciate this, you don't you don't appreciate comic books at all. Come on, man. Now, all I'm waiting for, come on, bitches, let's get on with the facsimiles. Amazing Spider-Man 121 and 1 and 122. 
Let's get on it, folks. All right. I suppose that's all today. Uh, thanks for watching. See you all very soon. Bye-bye.